Welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we're two Swedes and we love design. Yes, and in this video we're going to talk about the enormously popular lamp PH5, designed by Paul Henningsen for Louis Paulsen. It was designed relatively late in his career, but has become one of his most recognized lamps found in homes and public buildings all around the world. It's definitely not one of our favorite lamps, but when talking about Scandinavian design, it's impossible not to mention it. And first, let's say some words about Henningsen. Everyone interested in design have heard about Paul Henningsen, a name highly associated with Danish lamps produced by Louis Paulsen. But outside Denmark, few people know anything about the person Paul Henningsen. And he was indeed so much more than just a lamp designer. Uh, he was like a writer, political agitator, songwriter, journalist, filmmaker, and yeah, much, much more. Mm. In the fall of 1925, a new exhibition hall was to be built in Copenhagen, and Henningsen was commissioned to design the lamps for the building. The result was a development of a lamp he had exhibited at the Paris World's Fair the same year. The new lamp was made from copper and had a top shade shaped like a plate, a middle shade shaped like a bowl, and a bottom shade <laughs> shade <laughs> shaped. <laughs> Those words are very similar in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. And a bottom shade shaped like a cylinder. Yeah. <laughs> That's correct, right? <laughs> <laughs> the classic Henningsen three-shade lamp was born. This legendary classic was actually designed in just a short period of time, in November and December of 1925. About a hundred of these lamps were delivered to the exhibition hall in the spring of 1926. Uh, tragically, during the Second World War, the exhibition hall was destroyed, mm -hmm. and the first ever three shade lamps were sold as metal scrap for as little as $35. Yeah. <laughs> But the PH lamp soon became a commercial success and well-recognized piece of design. A huge lot of different versions were produced. Pennant lamps, chandeliers, table lamps and floor lamps. Yeah. And for the rest of its life, Henningsen continued designing a long range of lamps. And several of these were exhibited for the first time at the exhibition Glas, Lys och Farver, uh, Glass, Light and Colors. Uh, held at the Copenhagen Design Museum in 1958. The visitors could see the Kugle Lamell Lamp, the Sphere Lamella Lamp, Kuglen, the Sphere, and not least the PH5. Uh, it's therefore often claimed that the PH5 was designed in 1958, but that's not the whole truth. Henningsen was actually basically ready with the drawings already in September of 1956. Only small adjustments were made in the two years prior to the 1958 exhibition. And it was introduced as a classic news. And that's no surprise. Uh, everyone uh, immediately recognized it as a pH lamp. But it differed quite a lot from the three shade lamps, not least when it came to function. Henningsen was highly frustrated with the light bulbs available at the time and designed the PH5 as a response to this, but we will get back to that later. Mm. In a way, the PH5 was a combination between the classic three-shade lamp and the four-shade lamp developed between 29 and 31. It has four light reflecting shades made from aluminum and steel, and the diameter of 50 centimeter gave it the name PH5. Yeah. <laughs> we have talked about that yeah, in it, another video. Yeah, right? we have a video about the model numbers yeah. of the three shade lamps, uh, and uh, it's always the number of uh, decimeters of the uh, diameter. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Between the large shades, Henningsen placed three small red, respectively blue shades. They transformed the unpleasant light from the bulb into a light with a color pleasant for the eye. Yeah. One of these three small shades was soon removed to increase the efficiency of the lamp. A big difference between the traditional pH lamps and the pH 5 was the possibility to use light bulbs of any size, um, and that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a spring forced the light bulb in place. Henningsen explained, I have accepted faith, and with Louis Paulsen's permission, I have designed a pH fix fixture, which can be used with any kind of light source, 
a light worm, Christmas <laughs> lights, or a hundred watt light bulb, but a fluorescent tube is too long. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure if uh, if uh, this uh, light worm is what a good. What is a light worm? Yeah, it's like the small bugs, you know. They are. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. Yeah, he, he was. He wasn't crazy. really serious. No. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. okay. The result of all this was a flexible lamp adapted to hang low over a table. Mm. The light is bright underneath the lamp, but some light is directed upwards into the surrounding room. And most important, mm. no matter what light bulb was used, it is, it's still not blinding. No. Creating a glare-free lamp was a mission for Henningsen through, throughout his career. Yes, yes. And the customers also wanted a pH 5 possible to use as the main light source in a room. And therefore the pH 5 200 watt was introduced in 1959. The normal pH 5 wasn't bright enough to hang high up in the ceiling. And uh, in the pH 5 200 watt the small red and blue shades were replaced by a reflecting shade. Mm. Uh, and the reflecting wing was uh, fitted to the top shade. And also the trumpet-shaped top shade uh, was also shortened. Trumpet-shaped? Yeah, it's like a trumpet. Uh, oh. Yeah, I would say a tulip-shaped, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Already in 1958, Henningsen experimented with table and floor lamps based on the pH 5. And in February, he uh, created a graceful prototype with a plexiglass version of the pH 5 mounted on a flower-looking three-legged legged foot. And it turned out to be too unstable and was never put into production. And a similar floor lamp can also be seen in old photographs. I have just seen one photograph of it, so uh, I mean it must be a prototype that mm. was scrapped almost immediately. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until 1964 he came up with the idea of a lamp standing on three uh, thin uh, pillars. Uh, aesthetically, it had clear similarities with some lamps he designed for the 1925 Paris World's Fair. And the PH5 table lamp was put into production the next year, but wasn't a commercial success and production was discontinued in the 80s. A small number of floor versions uh, were also produced, but they were not the standard product in the Louis Paulson catalogs. The construction of the pH lamp wasn't changed much until 1980. By then, 60, 75 and 100 watt light bulbs were of the same size and the spring was mm. no longer needed to adjust their placement inside the lamp. A simpler lamp fitting was introduced and at the same time the construction of the trumpet shaped shade was improved. Yeah. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> yeah. Prior to this, the shade was made in two pieces resulting in an ugly seam mm -hmm. in the middle. The new lamps looked much better. Yeah. And the PH5 is probably Henningsen's commercially most successful lamp. Hmm. Uh, popular new as well as second hand. And in the furniture store you'll have to pay around 1000 US dollars for a new one. Yeah. Uh, and the price at auction differ quite a lot uh, hmm. depending on what condition they are in. Uh, the aluminum shades are relatively fragile and quite difficult to repair if dented. In good condition, a uh, PH5 is often about 200 US dollars at auction. Yeah. And earlier this year, Louis Paulson actually released recycled versions of the, re oh, uh, of the PH5 really? called the PH5 Retake. Oh. And time-worn vintage lamps or imperfect new ones are stripped from uh, paint and transformed into industrial-looking one-of-a-kind lamps. Oh. And we think this is a great idea. Um, uh, reusing lamps, otherwise scrapped, is great for the environment yeah. and they look great. Sounds fun. Yeah, yeah it's one. a fun thing and uh, well, great idea. Can you idea. buy me one? Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> they are sold for about the same price as a standard uh, PH5 yeah. lamp and you, mm. then you get the unique one. I like it. Yeah, and this was our introduction to the PH5 uh, lamps. Uh, yes. We have been talking quite a lot about Paul Henningsen, but we really like his, him and his lamps. So uh, perhaps there will be more videos about him. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, but if you like this video... Please click thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and follow us on Instagram if you don't uh, already. <laughs> We're called Scandinavian Design 101. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Thank you.